Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we're gonna learn how to dial a metal tone for the boss katana. Let's check it out. So first and foremost, the guitar I'm using is this PRS Bernie Marsden model that uh, is not actually a metal guitar but uh, I've been using music exclusively for metal because the pickups are very aggressive and uh, it sounds really cool. Another thing is, um, nowadays every band, basically since since I remember Korn, uh, lower their tuning on their guitar, so that's also important. And this is um, offset down, and then this string is like uh, drop D, but uh, sharp, no, flat, that's it. So, um, as you guys can see now on, on the screen, I have the, this applies for both Boss Katan MK1 and MK2. This is the MK2, but let's see if I need an uh, extra stuff here that I don't have on the MK1. But uh, basically, the same principle applies. So, uh, there are many ways to achieve a ma uh, modern metal tone or a metal tone with any, any uh, channel that you have, amp type uh, in this case. Even the acoustics, there are some guys that stick a metal zone into the acoustic and that's it. But uh, I'm gonna go with the brown channel because it says brown, okay? And uh, right now the sound that I have, it's this one. By the way, I'm recording via USB and I'm gonna show you here. What I've done in Logic is, if you guys take a look, a look here, I have the Katana as the input device, okay? And the output device, I have my Universal Audio Thunderbolt, all right? so. Uh, basically recording the USB signal and I can hear it via my studio monitors which are a Yamaha HS7 so I'm not recording the microphone right now uh, closing this open up Stone Studio again and we have a lot of distortion already and a lot of noise well a bit noise out of the box it's a great tone uh, everything is at noon, as you guys can see here. There's nothing, nothing um, really engaged by now. Even if you can see here on EQ, it's disengaged. Uh, regarding the chain, it's in chain number one. Let me put this in chain number three. Probably nothing will change. No, nope, because it's everything off. But I'll leave it here in chain number three because I want the booster first and some modulations, perhaps, and effects. Let's see. So the first thing that I do here usually is control the gain. You don't need really much gain unless you're playing for yourself. But when it comes to recording, and I'll I'll try to make a demo of that in this video, uh, too much gain will uh, be bad for your tone. Not just your tone, but in a mix situation, you'll have like too much guitar, too much gain going on, no definition at all. So. Um, First and foremost, let's go to the booster because, as you guys know, uh, it's a way to tighten up the sound. So, not that it sounds bad at all, but I'm going to roll back the gain down perhaps around here. Let's see how it sounds now. Maybe too much uh, IN information right now. So I'll start with the booster, and, and the booster that uh, usually I use, you can double click here and enter your values, also here, is a Tube Screamer because it's, it's not the only one I use, of course, but this one, it's, uh, you get fast results for uh, this kind of application. So I'm gonna engage the booster, more noise, and you get this. <laughs> much tighter the tone. Uh, regarding the noise, let's go to the noise suppressor and engage it. I'm gonna leave it here as it is, or even increase a little more because, uh, because I want a really tight tone, not much um, a noise in between when I palm mute. So this is kind of ideal. All right, so uh, first I'm going to dial, as usual, uh, the first EQ here on this page instead of going with the Q regular the knob regular knobs on the katana so I'm going to engage this first let me put this everything at uh, kind of noon here 
and uh, okay engage there's nothing on going on uh, I like to scoop around uh, 600 Hertz not too much but a little bit so we'll try that I'm gonna scoop here in low mid gain around two decibels okay so subtle change I'm gonna disengage but it's there definitely there okay now what I like also to do is going here around one this is perhaps the most important tone because the guitar is a mid-range instrument and um, for this kind of modern metal tone is very related to gent stuff and uh, around the mid, the mid frequency is very important to get that really tight low-end tone and if you have like a seven string guitar like I do there and you tune it even down it'll get that kind of, of situation so for now I'm going to increase one decibel or two two decibels and you guys can see the low mid Q and the high mid Q are all to the left meaning that the curve it's wide and not uh, like this so normally I think I explained this on a previous video you use uh, tighter values uh, uh, tighter mid Q like the wave doing this to cut right to go for a specific frequency and then to boost use a, a more wide EQ okay um, it's always like this it's always like we do, we do it uh, and mixing engineers do it as well but this is not very very precise and you not you cannot see how, how, how the Q reacts if it's very narrow or if it's very wide you can only listen with your ears there's no graphic representation so to speak of a digital EQ I wish there was but there's nothing uh, now I'm going here to the um, I'm gonna stay here on the EQ because this is kind of the same thing of doing the high pass and low pass filter you do on MK1 except it has a second page and I'm gonna low cut this around 5 which is too much and see how it sounds okay see now there's two options amp out meaning it's in the end of the amp or amp in let's see how it sounds amp in so it's much more drastic so I leave it at amp out and I'm gonna put it around 8k let's see how it sounds uh, it sounds good but it's still for me a little bit harsh also uh, especially in the high end so right now I'm using also the vintage uh, cap resonance because I think it's the best one for me at least uh, I probably use this on almost every tone that I make and modern and deep they're cool but I think this is the best one uh, I'm gonna also look at a little bit around 40 Hertz all right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave this EQ right now it's going to effects and engage another EQ which you, you can also do this in the MK1 a graphic EQ all right and uh, I'm gonna cut and boost some frequencies I'm gonna cut again a little bit here around 500 okay uh, I'm gonna try to boost a little bit here especially this, uh, this area is usually boosted for uh, usually boosted for solo stuff well, let's see without EQ very subtle but it's a little more tight like this and I'm gonna grab this fader here and start dialing back while playing there's not much difference because of the chain uh, your your choose so but I'm gonna dial it back because there's always always a little bit of a difference let's say, check out the 8k range minus 15 decibels minus 10 decibels now let's go for the 4k range zero 2k this darkens totally your tone so I'm gonna leave it at zero as well 1k I'm gonna put this one decibel up I have here 125 
And this is a very important frequency because if I boost it, you can hear that kind of chanty tone. <laughs> So I think it's sounding good so far. I'm gonna cut it uh, a lot so you guys can listen to the difference. It loses something, so I'm gonna put it back at two. And uh, I'm gonna, not going to mess around with the 63 hertz, 62 hertz, very specific frequencies. And uh, I'm gonna leave it as it is. And now I'm going into the presence control. Um, I mean, I'm going into the EQ. Proper EQ, proper, not proper EQ, the knobs on the katana. I'm gonna roll down some treble, around 18. Too much, okay, a little bit more. Uh, bear in mind this is recording via USB, so you don't have exactly the same sound that I'm hearing here on my room. But it's very close, and for me, um, the MK2, don't ask me why, has sort of a better USB signal. I might be wrong, but that's what I think. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna handle a little bit bass and see what happens. Okay, let's check out. <laughs> There's a lot of variants here uh, that can play into the game. Roll down a little bit. I'm gonna increase the, the, the middle here, so you see. And now decrease it, opposite side, more or less. You lose something, but you're in the right direction. Don't, don't take the mids totally off because uh, you'll get that uh, black album tone. Not that it's bad, it's awesome, but it's not considered a, a modern metal tone, okay? Now, uh, what I'm thinking right now is the booster, because the booster plays a very important part as well, because you have tone and bottom. So what I'm gonna do right now, it's increase the tone a little bit higher, around 10 or nine, can be nine. A little more, let's increase a lot to see the difference. Okay, let's increase it, put it here back around uh, probably six. Bottom hand, maximum, too much. We're gonna take a little bit, actually. Sounding better. I'm gonna increase again a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. Cool. Now I'm going to engage also, uh, increase, I mean, the presence knob at around 75, 74. Meanwhile, while you're doing this, don't forget to do this, which is basically right. And I'm on the Donna B channel for call it modern metal already, call it modern metal. I started from blank, but right. So I don't lose anything, okay? So. <laughs> Already sounding pretty much uh, uh, great, but now I have the variation mode. Now this is for the MK2. Let's see what variation brings. Well, it brings an overall more excitement to the tone, especially on the on the high end register. I don't know if that's uh, good or not. Depends. I'm gonna disengage it and test test it again. <laughs> Basically, this is like if you record one guitar with variation and another without variation, it's like having kind of two different microphones. Okay, I engage variation right now. I like this mode, but there's a lot of high end, so I would go to EQ and probably roll down a little bit more. Let's see. Turn off variation mode, do the same. 
Now it's kind of muffled this time, right? So variation sounds good here. But since we have too much eye gain information, I'm gonna cut some treble there. Going back to my effects where my graphic EQ is, open up a little bit on the AK. Okay, open up a little bit in 2K, in 1K, I mean, like 3 decibels. And now go back to the 500K and take a, a lot just to see what happens. Tightens up the tone a, a lot, so I'm gonna leave it at minus 7 probably. And now this is always a question of balance. I'm losing some IN, so I'm going back to my probably on the katana knobs here, a little bit of treble. All these components interact with each other, so you have always to be messing around. Now there's too much. There is. If I, if I disengage variation mode, you'll see the sound is very muffled right now. See? So the variation does not come with MK1, but it's very handy in this type of scenario. Okay, what else? I'm gonna increase a little bit middles here to see what happens. So, I prefer to take the middles a little bit, mid, not middles, the mids a little bit off and increase around 250 here, a little bit more, and 125. Let's see what, how it sounds now. Now I believe we need a little bit more I end, so, so this can take time, so bear with me and take a little bit here as well, 62 hertz. Yes, definitely, definitely, I mean, let me put this at 8K. Back to 6K. Sounding good, noise reduction even more. I want this to close very fast and this is not, not the best noise suppressor on earth, far from that. But anyway, uh, okay now we have here also I gain, I'm gonna increase one decibel if I can do it, one decibel, double click, one, okay, and see how it sounds. Cool, also Decrease a little bit the bass. I don't need too much bass. I need to give space for my mix uh, Especially for the bass and for the kick drum Sounding good. What else uh, about this mid cue? I'm gonna try to change this to a narrow Not in this case. I'm sorry in this case to see what happens the tone changing drastically. So I think I, 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 I got the tone. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna write it, Mother Metal, and I'm gonna share it with you, it will be in the link description of the video. Now a good technique, and, and now I'm gonna minimize this, is to actually record uh, double tracking the guitar. So I'm gonna record, I'm gonna press stop here uh, in Logic, and I'm going to record a small riff, okay? So you guys can see what I mean. Okay, right now that I have one guitar here, I'm going to double track the guitar by duplicating the track that I have here and record again on top to see how it sounds.
I don't know if it's is correctly on time, given the fact that I'm not listening to the metronome so well, but now if I hard pan one guitar to the left and the other to the right, you get this. <laughs> And then you have it, there you have it, a modern metal tone, then you guys can use this, this patch as you wish, and then of course if you're recording for yourself, if I was recording for myself, I, I, would, I would use other EQs uh, in Logic to tame some of the high end, and probably I would use the microphone to capture the tone, not via USB. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more, please subscribe and hit that bell notification, because I know no one hits that bell, not even me, and uh, that's it, cheers! Yeah.